Hello. Hope all is well. Starting another painting here. Today we're going to be doing a interesting scene. This one caught my eye. It's a um, totally backlit scene. I'm in the woods looking out over a lake and I was just captivated by the um, cool background and the uh, warmth of the uh, trees, the leaves. So I thought I would uh, give it a shot and paint it. Starting with a uh, wash, just a simple oil wash of approximate tones. And a lot of times I would start with a background I'm sorry with the foreground and work my way back but this scene because of all the complexity in the foreground I got to get some background color blocked in first and hope that this bumblebee flying around here close to my feet doesn't decide to sting me If you're new to my channel, or welcome, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe, or if you've been watching for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, it'd be great if you could. Keeps my spirits up with all the work that goes into doing this, dragging out my photography equipment and plein air equipment. I'm sure you're probably thinking, yeah, wine, wine, wine. But, it's easier to plan our paint without recording. Let's just put it that way. So if you could give me a little encouragement, hit that thumbs up button too, that'd be great. So of course we're working in oil paint here. I'm painting on a, um, just a strip scrap of oil prime linen. It's a portrait grade, which I like to use a lot when I'm out plenter painting just because it's a little quicker to work with. And now Got a helicopter flying over, I'll wait. Looks like I'm kind of tilted here. A little more than I want it to be. Let me just adjust that quick. Make sure we're good in the camera. Looks pretty good. I'm a one-man show, so. If something's screwed up, it's totally my fault. So now with this approximate tone blocked in, now I'm gonna do what I normally start with, which is identifying my darkest dark. Getting that blocked in. Which is right at the base of these trees. I'm going to squint at the scene so that I can really get these values in.
keeping everything very thin right now. Gonna get the main trunk in that I'm seeing on this uh, grouping of trees. This might actually just be one tree. I know sometimes when these trees get, they get cut down when they're young, but the roots don't die. They'll come back and with multiple uh, trunks. Actually had that happen with a tree in my yard when we first moved in the house. I cut it down. The neighbor was um, no longer there. He was kind of a BSer. <laughs> he told me, uh, I think he just wanted me to cut it down because he didn't want it hanging over his yard. And he said, I think that's some kind of weed or something. And I was dumb enough to believe him at the time. So I cut it all up and here it was a silver maple. And it came back with a vengeance. And now it's hanging over the yard, their yard like crazy. <laughs> so while I was the initial idiot, it, it didn't uh, end up helping. It's beautiful silver maple though. But it's dark, I'm basically just using Viridian and transparent red oxide. I am along a trail in a uh, public forest, so we might have some company. It's a neat sounding frog right behind me. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's going to take some artistic liberty in. Paint this tree the way I want it to look. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm oh, just kidding. I got all the ways to go yet. I probably lost about 20% of my viewers right there. Probably thinking, man, what a lame painting that was. If you're new to this channel, you'll find sometimes I attempt at some kind of sense of humor.
Okay, so this is kind of an interesting thing you got going on here. Time for me to really start squinting. Now, key to painting a scene like this is not to think of the um, this this is being behind this. Okay, this background is not behind the trees. You're thinking, what the heck? This guy's loopy. Um, now, of course, it is in reality, but from an artistic point of view, you don't want to think of it that way. You just want to think of it as color shapes that come up against each other and have certain types of edges that you then have to paint. To get the uh, effect that you want, which of course is for it to look like the scene that's out there. Something I want to get in. I should have probably used a clean brush for this, but oops, I did not. Here's a uh, light area right there. That's going to be important for helping me gauge my values. The, this light area is actually um, just water that is not being affected by any kind of reflection. So that'll help me gauge my um, values elsewhere. Good painting, a lot of it is just about getting values correct, value relationships, and it's a lot easier to do that if you can get in your lightest light and your darkest dark right away, or very early on, I should say. Okay, I think I'm going to build a little bit from the ground up. So, start with these greens down here. And this I'm putting on a little bit thick. I normally don't start this thick right away, but <clears throat> we'll see if I regret doing this or not. Normally I always try to start pretty thin. I'm going to be taking a very impressionistic approach from very early on, which is why I feel a little more comfortable going thick. This is going to be more about little dabs of color than it is big color masses that I might have to adjust later.
So right now I'm just trying to establish a uh, color harmony here. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. Beautiful light. Yeah, it is. Very nice. He said uh, lighting is beautiful and definitely is. It's a little hazy. I was expecting it to be sunny all evening, but some hazy clouds moved in. But if you uh, have an open eye for it, you can find, even when your plans get dashed, you can find beauty in, um, if you keep your eyes open and your mind open. Not sure if you heard that. That was a blue heron flying away. There were some guys out fishing very close to here. Hello. I have to admit too, I haven't really, I don't know if I've ever painted a scene quite like this before. So this is a new challenge for me. This painting might not even turn out, who knows. Hello.
lady is pushing her child in a stroller on a forest trail. That's not easy. Very uh, dedicated mother there. I've done that myself with my children, but she was all by herself, so. This is where it gets tricky trying to uh, imply water moving through here because I know I said that the we don't want to think about you know this the water the background being behind the foreground the reason why we don't want to think about it like that is just because we don't want to get in the habit of you know, I gotta paint the background first, then I paint the foreground above the up over that. It's not the best way to paint. Because you're kind of separating the elements mentally. However, you still want it to look like the background is behind the foreground. And a scene like this gets really tricky. The thing that really drew me to this scene is right around here are these um, cool colors playing off of the uh, warm colors of the branches or of the leaves. That's what I really want to nail. A lot more people moving through the area, I guess. It's uh, early evening, people are off work, so they're taking their walks. In hindsight, I should have went darker with this background. Gets a little more tedious this way. But I still think we can make it work out.
There. For me, getting that foreground in there first, even though you know block, blocking it in fairly strongly in the first place before I went in with more certainty, the background gave me you know the certainty I needed to be able to gauge the color temperature and value of the background more accurately. Gonna grab a clean brush. And I can't remember if I got this in the reference photo or not, but there is some sky back there. It's a hazy sky. Yeah, that's a very late afternoon. But I want to block this in and see what that looks like. Yeah, I do kind of like that. Some very intense uh, ripples and reflections. I wanted to try to get those as much as possible. I think I better clean off my palette now. Okay, palette is clean. Good thing about cleaning off your palette is, at least for me, it's kind of like clearing out your mind. Sometimes we can get so um, overly focused and zero it in on what we're doing, and we uh, may lose sight of the big picture. Yeah, that pun is kind of intended, by the way. And if you have a big mess on your palette, it's uh, can be even more just just another thing in your mind that's uh, can make things difficult. background trees are getting some highlights. It's just some variation in color too, so I'm going to get that in before I move on. Don't want to overdo it, but just give this a little dimension back here. People are going by in a kayak, creating a really neat ripple. Let's see if I can 
get a little bit of that ripple in. I'm putting almost pure white on, but I'm adding just a touch of lemon yellow to it. Hi. Okay, so now for the fun part. I'm gonna get palette knife out, mix a decent amount of this color. I'm gonna mix an overall light color of the leaves and an overall shadow color. Getting low on Viridian, so I'm going to jump into uh, Ultramarine Blue, some Cad Yellow Light, and some Cad Lemon. By the way, it reminds me, I don't think I ever told you guys my colors. Um, tried to do that in every video. Shame on me. So let me stop and show you really quick. Those of you who are probably watching me for the first time are like, dude, it's about time. If you've even gotten this far, maybe you just got frustrated and shut it off. Hopefully not. But um, anyway, my colors are titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, which is very close to burnt sienna, um, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, viridian, and chromium green oxide. All right, so basically I got a light and a dark version of my leaves. And I can intermix between them too, just to kind of get, you know, a midway tone. Start out with the darks. I'm not going to try to replicate everything I'm seeing here in nature. I just want to uh, get kind of an impression. These darks are not in this spot. They're actually further over, but I'm going to borrow from where they're at just because I want to make it 
a little more compositionally interesting. Kind of starting to lose our sunlight a little bit. I'm laying this down pretty thick. Constantly stepping back, trying to uh, assess the composition and how it is. Okay, just had to do a battery change there. By the way, I'm uh, thinking about starting a uh, Patreon account where uh, those of you who like what I'm doing and want to support it um, in any kind of financial way can. This is... Uh, Actually not cheap to do. I got some camera equipment invested in this solely for the purpose of just recording these YouTube videos. Um, plus the gas, all the other equipment around, all that. It's uh, quite a process and the time involved too to do this, to make the videos, to edit the videos. Put it together, all that fun stuff. I 
And what I'm thinking of doing is my normal artwork that I sell through galleries and that is historical Native American. So I thought, well, heck, why don't I just, uh, for those who want to support me, for those who do support me, I could give them these paintings. So I was thinking I would do a, uh, a monthly drawing of those who are supporters and once a month give away one of my paintings that I do here. So this is late May, mid to late May. Um, not sure if I'm going to do this yet, but and this probably won't be published this particular video until mid June. So if you're watching this, if I've decided to do it, go down into the uh, um, description below here in the video. If you just scroll down in the video description and you should see a link that will take you to my Patreon account. And if you become a supporter, you'll be in the drawing. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm thinking of you know, starting at certain amounts, not not much. Um, the thinking is that, you know, not have like one person pay tons of money, but just everybody pitch in a little bit who wants to. And, uh, you know, if a lot of people do it, that's gonna really help me out. If my computer dies that I use for Processing these if my camera dies, something like that. Because right now I'm, it's at the point where if one piece of equipment dies, I'm done. Um, <clears throat> and I've already bought some replacement stuff, uh, microphone cables, things like that. I'm using a wired mic that just have a long cord that goes uh, to my. Uh, camera just always hope and pray I don't step on the darn thing and knock the whole apparatus over but anyway uh, if I decide to do it um, when you're watching this video you should see a link below if you want to support me that'd be awesome and you might get a uh, you might get a painting the paintings will be unframed um, but you'll be able to frame them if you want. Have a good night. Sir. You too. And if I decide not to do it, there won't be any link below. Um, Another thing too though that I have decided to do, I am doing, is I'm offering uh, live online painting classes. I have a membership site and I open the doors once a month. You become a member, um, you can go in and watch instructional videos where uh, full demonstrations on studio paintings where I really go in depth in um, explaining. Out here I don't do a whole lot of talking just because I can't because uh, time constraints and all that fun stuff. But for my uh, students that are members of my site, there's a lot of instruction. Um, we meet most every Saturday Saturday and uh, paint together live through Zoom and we, we work on a painting, one painting a month from start to finish and I explain all the color mixing, all the theory behind it, why you're mixing these colors, the whole, the whole thing and you're gonna learn a lot. If you're a beginner, especially intermediate, we take all levels, but uh, 
you know, some, some beginners do struggle a little bit because you know, painting's painting's tough at the beginning. So beginners are going to struggle. Beginners will struggle no matter what. I know I did, but um, you can get there a lot faster if you get some good instruction, or at least know where you got to go. I know some people say, oh, I don't need to do that. I can just paint on my own. And I actually had that philosophy for years when I first started. And you do need to paint on your own. As I said before, you know, nobody can give you their experience. You need to get your own painting experience under your belt. But you're going to do a lot better. You're going to get there a lot quicker if you have some solid instruction to back it up versus just, you know, shooting in the dark. I remember when I took my, um, when I took the Scott Christensen workshop, just the first day, the things he was explaining, it was like scales fall from my eyes. And it's just like, that's what I've been doing wrong. That's where I've been screwing up. I wish I'd known that years ago. But anyway, if you are interested, um, there is a link below. Provided you're not watching this like 10 years from now and I maybe have stopped doing it. But um, right now, and for quite a while after this recording, there will be a link below. And you can sign up on the waiting list. We have a waiting list just because... Um, You don't want to jump in halfway through a uh, painting session when we're doing the live sessions and, you know, you kind of miss out on that. So I, when a space does open, spaces are limited, but when it does open, I notify everybody on the list and then it's first come, first serve. So I'd love to have you there if you want to take your painting to the next level. Sign up and maybe we'll see you there. Just want to say too, we also do uh, live Q&A and critique sessions. So it's not just about the painting we're working on in the class, but if you're working on a painting and you're struggling with, you can get professional feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I just want to say too with the membership, uh, that's something too you can cancel anytime. And you know, when you sign up, if you do the monthly, if you do the yearly, you get a discount. But if you do the monthly, I mean, you are committed for that month. But at the end of that month, you can drop out if you don't like it. i pretty sure you will, though. And if you don't know anything else about me besides you just stumbled on my channel, um, I, um, not to toot my own horn too loudly or anything, but I've won awards at major plein air events, including uh, Plein Air Easton, got Best Architecture there, Vanishing Landscape Award, won some Quick Draw Awards there. 
And Planner Easton, that's that's the top one out there. I stopped doing it just because I wanted to uh, move on to other things, but it's a really neat event. And I was also the featured artist at the Southeastern Wildlife Expo in Charleston. That's the world's largest and most prestigious wildlife art show. And as 2020 featured artist, that was a pretty big deal. Remember when they called me to tell me I just about fell over. That was so awesome. And was in art magazines. I've been featured in different magazines too and everything, but that one was really neat. That happened right before COVID hit. So it's like did the show, got back home and a couple weeks later you couldn't buy toilet paper. It's thankful. Uh, then the following year, um, this year, 2021, the show was canceled. But they're starting to back up again. And I've been featured in the Western Arch uh, Western Collector Magazine, um, Planner Magazine articles, not advertisements. So I've had galleries advertise me too, stuff like that. So I do have some experience. Um, I just say that because I know people like to take workshops from people they think are famous and all that. It, doesn't, it shouldn't really matter. You have good teachers who nobody knows about and then you have bad teachers that everybody has heard of. But I try to be a good teacher. Sun's getting lower and lower in the sky. My time is beginning to run out here. Heard some animals sneaking up on me. Probably a little squirrel or chipmunk or something.
want to thank you for watching if you've been sticking with me this whole time I know I've been pretty quiet like I said I've uh, never really did a painting like this before this is very challenging and when I am being challenged I tend to uh, quiet up We'll see what I think of this painting when I get back in the studio. I can sense the light is really fading out now. Just trying to simplify the design a bit. Okay, I think I'm going to call that a uh, study. Not the easiest one I've done, but uh, stick around here to the very end. You can see the uh, finished one. I also have other videos, um, so go check those out. Just making some quick value adjustments here. All right, thank you for watching.